free candy. The book I was reading is called The Enchantress of Florence. Yeah? And it was written by Salman Rushdie. Who's here? Salman Rushdie! Salmon. You know that that licking the page thing? Yeah. There's a whole Agatha Christie novel which depends on that. Yeah, it doesn't... You know, they, they, put the, the... they put the poison, the murderer puts the poison on the top right-hand corner of each page. Isn't that the name so of the rose people do as that. well? The name of the yes, rose? that's got that too. That's yeah, got that did, too. Did Agatha Christie write the name of the rose under the pseudonym Umberto Eco? Umberto Eco yeah. is it's Italian for Agatha Christie. <laughs> Agatha Christie. <laughs> I think that... Do you like Agatha Christie? I've never read any yeah. Agatha Christie. Yeah, yeah really. the, the good ones are good. Yeah? The bad ones are terrible. So it falls pretty much into the realm of books. That like, yes. Yeah. Yes. This, I've just started reading this. I'm yeah. actually, I'm actually kind of fascinated by this. This is very lovely. It's, it's kind of. I hear Dracula is in this book. Dracula's there. in it. Yeah. I like a book with Dracula. Yeah. It? I discovered. I, you know, there was a moment when I was doing the research for the book, and I discovered that Dracula was the right period. Yeah. And I kind of thought I'd gone to heaven, really. Yeah. I know. It's fine. That I could have Dracula. Dracula wasn't a vampire. No, but he was Vlad Dracul. Wasn't he, he was. He was he, but you know, actually, he was so bloodthirsty yes. that if he'd been a vampire it would have been better yeah <laughs> yeah because he, he's like an, he would be an alcoholic vampire he yeah. would just he, there wouldn't be enough blood for him there's a moment when there's this army marching at him right. and in order to put them off and for no other reason right he impaled 20,000 people on stakes and put them around the town where he was right that... they come over here have some of this guess what they did what they ran away <laughs> That's what I would have done. <laughs> exactly. Clearly, this man was crazy. I would crazy. have thought, yeah, yeah. Crazy. That, that, Dracul, you know what it means? Dracul, Dracula. dragon. Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Is Tetesh. there a dragon in the book? I like no, dragons. Just him. No. no. no did you ever see that film with the dragon where Sean Connery did the voice of the dragon? Yes. That was yeah, awesome. Very good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's white albino giants, though. White albino giants? Yes. Swiss ones. Swiss? Swiss albino giants. Now, how did the Swiss get into this book? What, the book is set where? In, in Florence? Between, it's a kind of road novel of the 16th century, goes from India to Renaissance Italy. Right. Via everywhere else. Right. Uh, Switzerland, then. Yeah, but the, the Swiss, giant you'll basketball be amazed players. to hear <laughs> what? that the Swiss were the most feared soldiers of the 16th century. They were like the Marines of the 16th century. Imagine that. Why? Because they were scary. Really? With <laughs> well, yes, but I mean, did they? Because they, they, have you seen the Swiss, uh, the Swiss Army guys at the? Well, they've got their pen knives, of course. Yes. They go, yeah, yeah. Yes. And they're outside the Vatican, they have those guys, the Swiss yes, Guard, in exactly. those uniforms. Well, the Swiss back in the day, people were scared of them. They said, "Oh my God, here come the Swiss!" They would run. Really? Yes. What happened with the Swiss then? They invented the cuckoo clock. All oh, right, that's it. <laughs> They've gone off it. Then they became exactly. very neutral. Is that how they yeah. got to be neutral? Everyone was like, "Don't, don't mess with the Swiss." Everything. No, exactly. Really? People were afraid of them. All right. Now, listen. When you write, the, when you write a book, how long does it take you to write a book? Because it's this very one. clever. This book. I mean, there's lots of like big words and like story <laughs> and stuff happens and you know. Friends become enemies, enemies yeah. become friends, you and know. It, and it all works out at the end. Well, no, I don't think it does. <laughs> I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. There's one of these books where you start reading it in the front page. And uh, who's Bill Buford, by the way? Who are you? He's a friend of mine. He all right. edited my books bit way back. All right. What kind of a friend? Good one. Okay. <laughs> male, male, good friend. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're in California now. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> You can marry your, your friend now if you wanted. Yeah. No, but I just, there's one of these books when you start reading it and it's, it's lovely and very poetic and there's a slight... I'm only just into it, so that's why I'm, I'm trying to okay. cover that. I'm only like three or okay. four pages in. And I will read it. I will can read I, it. Can I help you cheat? Yes, yes, yes. All right. There's a riddle in the book. Right. This guy, this young, handsome, European-looking guy. Right. Like you. No, oh, maybe 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> arrives at the court of the great Indian emperor... The, Mughal Emperor Akbar, and says to him, I'm your uncle. He's actually younger than him. What? Exactly. <laughs> How are you going to be my uncle? Yeah. He says, well, because my mother was your great aunt who you mislaid long ago. Oh. Mislaid. Mislaid. She yeah. got, yes. <laughs> I understand. You write very clever books. Yeah. I do cheap puns. That's but, what yeah. I do. Yeah. No, the word has, has two syllables, one right. of which is laid. I agree. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anyway, so there's, there's a story about this mislaid great aunt who 
makes her way across the world from warlord to king of Persia to Italian mercenary, and then allegedly is his mother. But how is that? That's impossible. So there's a riddle in it. And you well, don't find out it. the answer to the riddle until the last page, Craig. Well, I'll read it to the very last page, which or is cheat. what I often do with books. Or cheat. Yeah. No, I won't cheat. No. I won't go to the last page. I don't like doing that. I, I, I mean, sometimes I do that, but I won't do it with this one. Go. Thank, yeah. thank you. Now, listen, you, you've become... Do you find that now that you're, you're, you're very well-known, you're a big personality, you're, in fact, a celebrity, uh, does that get in the way of, uh, of, of being a novelist? Do you like... Do you, or do you enjoy going out and performing? You know, there are things I like. I mean, it gets you tables in restaurants. Right. That's, but, that, that's about well, it. Really. People say that, but, uh, you know, there that's are it, people though. all over the country and all over the world who are not famous who go to restaurants almost every day. And get tables. Yeah. <laughs> that's what restaurants are for, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, but then there's the restaurants where you have to get yes, tables. Uh, yeah, Anyway, never mind. No, it's kind of a pain in the neck because... And actually, truthfully, it doesn't bother me that much because, you know, you're writing this stuff most of the time you're at home. Right. Um, when nobody gives a damn who you are. Right. You know, my children, they see me come on TV, they change channel. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's see if there's yeah. anything interesting on. What, what have you been, yeah. you've been performing recently. What was that thing with uh, Scarlett Johansson that you were I doing? I was in a video. A, a video. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have that? Do we have the Scarlett Johansson thing? Can I, I'd like to see that. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Is that a video for her song? That's for her song, yeah. That's what she's made these. She's made this album of Tom Waits songs. And no, right. I was actually, it's all about ping pong, that. That, yeah. that song's all about ping no, pong? No, no. My knowing Scarlett Johansson, there's a bunch of us who get together at the weekend in New York and we play ping pong. And she really? Was, yeah. And she was there. I'm so out of the loop, I can't believe it. I'm telling you. <laughs> ping pong is the secret. Really? Do you play ping pong? I do now. <laughs> Well, Scarlett, she showed up with A, her ping pong bat, right. and B, her video dude. And That's then she fantastic. said, And then she said, would you do a bit? But actually, he was asking me to do much ruder things. With the ping pong ball? No, with her. Oh. He was saying to me, you want, you want to know what he was saying? Yeah, sure. He was saying, lick her face. <laughs> and did I, you, she did was, you lick her face? And she was going, ugh. <laughs> And I was saying, I'm not going to lick her face. She's saying, ugh. She's saying, ugh, yeah. If she was going, hey, hey, exactly. then you, then you, you know. Yeah. Well, women usually give you a signal if they want exactly. you to lick their face. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, isn't it? <laughs> so, so we compromised and I, I kissed her neck. Hey, listen, that's all right. You know, that's all right. If invited to kiss Scarlett Johansson's neck. Do it. Yeah, my, that absolutely. Was my, that was Every my time. View. That was it's my lovely view. to talk to you. I wish we had more time. And, 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 uh, and I will read the book. I'm, I'm fascinated by this already. It, is, uh, it looks as if you've almost opened it. I have opened it. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the one I'm reading. This is a special TV version. My, mine has all, like, big words and explanations yeah. and crib sheets. And little and notes in the margin yeah, saying right. exclamation mark. Ask Salmon about exactly. Scarlett yeah, Johansson exactly. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to talk to you. Salmon Rush Day, everybody. Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah. It's super rain. Now, all week we've been running uh, uh, trailers for the sketch you're about to see. The anticipation has been building. <laughs> People are starting to talk like Sean Connery all over America. <laughs> and now is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, please, uh, it, it's here. I, I, I want you to relax, sit back and enjoy the sketch which we call A Party at Elton John's House. Everybody, A Party at Elton John's House. Pinch myself, I can't believe it. Me, the actual Craig Ferguson. <laughs> Finally here at a party at Elton John's house. Shh. Craig Ferguson. <clears throat> it's nice to see you again. What the salmon rusty, everybody? What? <laughs> What the hell are you doing here? I didn't know you were on the other team. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I get your meaning, but you know, you're gonna have fun tonight. George Michael's here, and, and the Nobel laureate, Herta Muller. Mm -hmm. You know, Elton John's guest list is always so eclectic. Eclair what? Eclair? 
Look, Salmon, I don't do big words, okay? <laughs> but if by eclectic you mean gay as a picnic basket, <laughs> then you're right. <laughs> well, there it is. Mm. Excuse me, mm -hmm. Richard. Oh, looky here, it's Elton John, everybody. <laughs> It's Craig Ferguson, the Vulgar Lounge Entertainer. Shouldn't you be dancing for quarters at an Indian casino? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were easy there, Reg. You made me come out of me pants. <laughs> <Don't>... <laughs> Which is like you. Don't try none of your double entendres on me, because I'm all man. Are you? I said I'm all man! <laughs> Not before I can see, dear. You, you know... <laughs> you know, Craig, I watched your show once and you mocked my parties 38 times! <laughs> 38! In one hour! Really? Only 38? I must have been off that night. <laughs> You know, I have to say, you don't seem like the real Craig Ferguson. May, well, may I ask why you aren't wearing any trousers? Ah, oh, you're just... you're just jealous, Elton. I've been getting back into shape. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Honey, check it out. You want to break off a piece of that? <laughs> huh? You disgust me. Uh, what about, uh, what about you, George Michael? <laughs> Even I wouldn't go there, girlfriend. What? <laughs> What is wrong with you people? This is a party at Elton John's house. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said this is a party at Elton John's oh, house. Right, yeah, yeah. Where's the crazy, freaky, deaky, pervy, sexy sex? Oh, come on, Craig. Aren't these crass, predictable jokes beneath you? Ah, you mean beneath me as in last time I had that many men beneath me was at a party at Elton John's house. <laughs> I think Craig's having another one of his off nights. I think you're right, Salmon, dear. Now, now that you see my parties aren't like that, maybe, maybe Craig, now you'd also like to see how off the mark your favourite joke is. Hmm. You're right. I've been a low-down bastard. <laughs> By the way, I know a place up on Hollywood Boulevard where they'll give you a low-down bastard. <laughs> no, no, George Michael. This time the joke's on me. Here we are at a party at Elton John's house, and it's me, Craig Ferguson. Big, fat, ugly Craig oh, Ferguson. Knock it off, Craig Impotent Ferguson. Impotent Craig Ferguson. Impotent yes. Craig Ferguson. I'm the one. It is me. Impotent? Yes. I'm the one who's exposed as a sexual deviant. Now, you see, this, dear boy, is the definition of irony. Ira what? Ira what? Iron Man, look. Salmon, I'm functionally illiterate. Oh, come on. You... But Elton, one word I do know is sorry. So I want to say I'm sorry for everything. Well, of course, Craig. I always forgive my D-list celebrity guests for the Piccadillos. <laughs> How do you know about my dildos? Oh, knock it off. Weird. Anyway, this calls for some music. Hit it, Salmon Rushdie. I said hit it, Salmon Rushdie! Salmon Rushdie? What the <laughs> Welcome the uh, author of The Enchantress of Florence, the lovely Salman Rushdie, everybody. Salman Rushdie. <laughs> Plenty of sexy. Plenty of sexy. Salman, welcome back. Thank it's you. lovely to see you. You too. And uh, I hope you didn't mind me reading a sexy bit out of the book. No, there's lots of dirty bits. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's, it's a true. very, it's, it's quite dirty. It is. Now, why is dirtiness okay if it's clever? 
Well, that's true in life too, isn't it? Yes, it is, actually. <laughs> is it? Yeah, stupid dirtiness, nobody likes it. No, lots of people like stupid dirty. Girls don't. Girls don't like stupid... Well, no, that's true. Women like their pornography in literate form, they do. don't they? Yes, they do. that's true. They, all that sexy vampire books as well. Oh, my busty bustiness and everything. That's all. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Do you ever read any of those? Vampire things? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think there's too much vampires. A little too much. But, but I'm going. But I'm going. I'm going to Transylvania. Salman, is this wise? Yes, I am. I'm going to be shown Dracula's castle. Are you thinking of buying it? I, well, you know, I, I gather it's cheap. It's, well, you know, yeah, because... You know, it's the upkeep. Well, it is, it's not buying the castle, it's keeping the it's castle, keeping, yeah. yeah exactly. But the, the idea of looking around, are you interested in vampires? I am. In fact, Dracula makes a guest appearance oh, in this true. book. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in there. Yeah. He, but yeah. it's because he's sexy. You're quite sexy obsessed, aren't you, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I'm here, Craig. No, no, no. Now... Oh, I have a bone to pick with you. Really? A boat? Yeah, yeah a bone. Can, a I, bone, pick, bone, can yeah. I pick a bone? Yeah, pick a bone. Well, you wrote a book. I did. Ferguson. I did. Can I call you Ferguson? Sure, Rushdie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you could call me Sir Salman. Sir Salman. Are you a sir now? Yeah. Holy crackers. Congratulations, yeah. my liege. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. On behalf of the people of America, yeah. I would like to present you with our ceremonial parakeet. Ah. We Ooh. only give those to our most prestigious guests. That's the order of the white cockatoo. That's right. And yeah. I know... I know you do enjoy a cockatoo. You know. Which of us does not? Yeah. Indeed. But anyway, the bone. I'll put that aside for you. Can Where I... is the bone, then? The yeah. bone is that, you see, your book... Yes? ...got a good review in the New York Times. I really? No, I couldn't believe really? it, actually, yeah. <laughs> you know how long it is since I had a good review in the New York Times? Do they not give you a good review? No, it's what about for this? Didn't it's they give you a good review? No, trash. They have the worst book ever written. Stop um, it! Yeah, yeah. It's been more than ten years since I had a good review in the New York Times. What was that? Satanic Verses? No, after that. I can't oh. remember. It's so long ago, I can't remember. But you... Yeah. ...got a good review. You well, you, you know why? You want to swap jobs? No, 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 because you have to be clever all the time. You're Salman Rushdie. People come up and say, so, Salman, what do you think about that? People come up to me and say, oh, oh cheeky monkey. And I go, yeah. But <laughs> well, I could do that. Yeah, you could do this, I could but do I that. couldn't do what you do. You see, this is the problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> how, now, how, how have you been? You're going to... You, Transylvania. Uh, yeah, Transylvania. Now, don't your books do very well with the... I'm big in Romania. Yeah. I am. I mean, some people are big in America. I'm big in Romania. What, what does they, that... They love it. They do love you, the do stuff. You, what, what language do they read the book in? Romanian. Do you speak Romanian? I do not, but I have a translator. It's useful. Yeah, but what do you, how do you know that... <laughs> how do you know the translator isn't, isn't adding jokes that you don't like? Or, well, he, well, whatever he's doing... It's <laughs> working. Yeah, well, good. It's working, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So do you go on talk shows no, in Romania? No, I've never been. I've never been. But they've been doing so well recently over there that I thought I should go and find out why. The, well, maybe it's Dracula's maybe way of luring you into the... Yeah, uh, or maybe the, they've been turned into vampire novels without my knowing. <laughs> <it. laughs> well, you know, there's a bit of vampiriness in this. Machiavelli's in this as yes, well. Yes, yes, yeah. he's in yeah. there. I he's... like him. Now, that's an unusual stance to take on Machiavelli, that you like him. I know, because everybody thinks he's horrible. But actually, he's been very misrepresented. History has not been kind to him. Right. And actually, the real guy was really very enjoyable you know he was sexy and funny and when he left town his friends would write him postcards saying please come back because when you're not here there's no one to organize the fun really and he was not at all machiavellian so we've been <laughs> we've been cruel to him for 400 years yeah, it sounds it was... a bit more like he's more like kind of john goodman or something like yeah, that yeah well but but sexier but sexier oh well if, i mean if thinner that... anyway Th Th thinner, thinner anyway. Anyway. well you don't know i mean it's been 400 no, no. years they he's may exactly. have <laughs> Put on some weight. He may have put on some weight in the past 400 years. <laughs> exactly. Now, did you, you spend some time in Florence when yeah, you were I younger? Yeah, I spent a long time when I was a kid. I mean, when I was at college, I spent a whole summer there. I spent, and, and that's really when my kind of love affair with it began. Do, is that when you... Did you have your uh, uh, sexual awakening in Florence? No, that was before. <laughs> Not oh, with Florence, then? Um, <laughs> I didn't know. You, you know Florence? Uh, <laughs> not only do I know her, Salman, I had my sexual awakening oh, with her. No, well, I... Yeah, that's something we have in common. No, where did you, uh, where did you have your sexual awakening, then? Um, Cambridge University. Really? Yes. Oh. Cambridge University, which is, by the way, celebrating its 800th anniversary this year. Wow. See? Young right? men and Old. young ladies from all over the world 
awakening sexually for... <laughs> at Cambridge. For hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of years. Hundreds and hundreds of years, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's a lovely town, Cambridge, actually. Very pretty. Now, uh, Stephen Fry went to Cambridge, didn't he? Mm, mm. Stephen Fry has a theory... How tall are you? Not as tall as Stephen Fry. No, no, I know that. Nobody's as tall. St Stephen has a theory that t uh, people that went to Cambridge are tall and people that go to Oxford, not so tall. But and it actually is kind of true. Is that true? Yeah. But I'm not that... I'm only five foot nine. I'm not that that's tall. That's tall for Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's true because Martin Amos went to Oxford and he's... You know, yeah, he's, he's little, yeah. He's a little And guy. Douglas Adams, God rest him, he went to Cambridge. Yes, he's an enormous, he's, he's enormous man. Yeah, yeah. Enormous, yeah. So yeah. there you are. There you are. Proved yeah, we proved it. <laughs> With reference to three novelists. <laughs> statistically... Now, do you think it's important for a novelist to have a good education? I ask for reasons of my own. No, but everybody's a novelist, haven't you noticed? Yeah, I have a bit. You know, I mean, like, you know, probably Paris Hilton's writing a novel. Everyone, everyone's a novelist. Or at least a writer. You know, at least everyone's... You know, at least everyone's written a book, that's Well, for everyone's sure. a writer now. Everyone. See, writing used to be, I think, this is the problem, that writing used to be the preserve of the educated classes. It mm. used to be monks and priests and, uh, you know, school teachers, I yeah. guess. And that was it. Yeah. And, and so the written word was given a great deal of merit because yeah. you had to have some kind of education that's in order true. to write. Now, pretty you, much anybody can you, write. And everyone does. Right, I absolutely. Mean, I went to the booksellers conference and I was sitting there with... I mean, right next to me was um, Don Henley of the Eagles. He'd written a book. Um, he wanted to present me. He wanted well, to present was, me with this book. It's called Hotel California, oh, isn't oh, it? It's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a woman there who'd written a book about um, 75 ways to improve your orgasms. She wanted to give me a copy of her book. You, know, you, you, a mark you, of you should. Yeah, I think you, I took you should. That one. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> I took that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> You have, you have 80 desks in a line with an author at each one of them, yeah. which and they change every hour yeah, no, for I, three days. I did it. I and did when it you see that, you realise that everyone in America has written a book. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and, yeah. and that makes you tumbling. Yeah, but, but this is really good. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're really, you're really good at writing books. I mean, you're Salman Rushdie, for God's sake. I mean, you're, you're pretty clever. <laughs> Mm. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yes, Do you I ever think, it. oh, I'd quite like to write a book with just pictures and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, I got asked recently, I got asked if, I, if I'd like to write a graphic novel. Yeah, well, you and, should. And, uh, and I mean, actually, you're, you're very kind no, of... No, yeah. I was kind of keen on it because yeah. I was, you know, when I was a kid, I was a real comic book nut. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I can tell you a lot about superheroes. Do you think Aquaman's better when it's just Tim Gunn instead of Aquaman? <laughs> I think... I'm a lot of people have said that. Yeah, well, it's, it's because he doesn't have the Aquaman outfit on. He has it know? on underneath. He does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, oh, that's perfect then. Yeah. No, no, no. No, but I like... I always liked Aquaman. You know, but I mean, I you know, I went into the deep secrets. I mean, the, what's the difference between red kryptonite and green kryptonite? What you is know, the all difference? that stuff? Well, well, one of them takes away his superpowers, but the other one can kill him. Oh, you see, green kryptonite it takes away superpowers. It makes him just like you or me. Well, like me. <laughs> 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 but red kryptonite can actually kill him. I, that, that's fine. I never knew that. Yeah, you see. But I'm you've not... revealed more about yourself than perhaps you had planned. Exactly. So I thought. So I'm quite. So I'm quite attracted to the idea of the graphic novel. Yeah, I you think know, it's I a good might, idea. I think might, you should do it. Might have a go. Yeah, all right. Mm. Well, it's lovely to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in and joining us. The book is called The Enchantress of Florence, now available in paperback. The uh, unfairly reviewed Salman Rushdie, everybody. <laughs> Very right, right, right. uh, And his name is Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie, everybody. <laughs>、So、nice to see、sport. you, dear. Hey, would you like a quick game of Angry Birds? Oh, do you play Angry Birds? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I can't. I was going to talk to you about this because、yeah. I have a terrible problem. I've, I have virtually stopped reading anything、yes. so that I can play Angry Birds. Me too. Me really? Too. Yeah. But you're Salmon Rushdie. You can't play Angry Birds. You've got to be writing brainy books about yeah. no, things. No. <laughs> books are getting very short. <laughs> the Angry Bird sessions are getting very long.、Uh, do you really play Angry Birds? I have three stars on every level. <laughs> Did you get. Oh, really? Yes. I can prove it, it's in my pocket. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, as they say in France, les oiseaux fâchés.
They say that in France? Yeah, I know you're into French right Oh, now. no, because uh, well, we had a French guy on the show you did. last night. His yeah. name was Artur, and he, you spent some time in France, right? I have done, yeah. Do you see this guy? Like, he, he copied this show. I heard that. And then it's everybody expected me to sue him. I'm like, no, right, let's get him on the show. No, it's And what, maybe I can have a night off. It's what they call it. <laughs> It's what they call in France le ripoff. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> but the thing is, though, the thing is about the French, though, he comes here and I'm already going, uh, yeah. and he's totally charming. I yes. was like, oh, please, take my pants. Uh, <laughs> he, already, he already did. Yeah, no, he did. These he are Bob Barker's. Yeah. Uh, old ones. Um, yeah. So what's this about? Shall I read it now? Yeah. <laughs> It's only 216 pages. That's short for you, that's actually. That's short. Yeah, that is short for you. Why is it so short? I'm just, you know, playing Angry Birds. Angry Birds, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this is it. Here, this gets you in. Yeah. Uh, first lines are very important for a book, I always think. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. Do you mm. want to tell them? <laughs> Don't tell them. No, no, no. No. <laughs> well, you'd have to find out for yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, better. <laughs> no, uh, the, the first chapter is called The Terrible Thing That Happened on the Beautiful Starry Night. Mm. Um, is this about your drinking years? <laughs> it's, it's more about the drugs, really. Right. Now, listen, yeah. let me ask you a question. You, yeah. uh, you uh, famously write fiction, uh, and lots of it. Like literary fiction, I'd say. That'd be fair, wouldn't it? That's, that's the technical term. Right. right. Would, yeah. you ever, uh, would you ever consider writing uh, a memoir? Uh, well, you know, it's funny you should say this, Craig. Do really? Well, that's unusual in this show, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, having, last time I came on, you gave me a copy of your memoir. Yes. And yes, this inspired me. Because mine was so crap, you thought, I, can, I can't do worse than this? Yeah. And so I wrote a children's book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am actually going to write a memoir next, I am. Really? Yeah, yeah, once this is done with. Now, th th did you say this is a children's book? Well, it's kind of, you know, older children. I wrote it for my son, who's 13. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. My, my son's nine yeah. and a half, but he's probably smarter than your kid, so he could probably... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I said it, pal, I said it. Is it, uh... No, but how do you, do you just like write a, a novel for grown-ups and then take out all the sex? <laughs> these days you have to put in the sex. Really? I think no, it must be very awkward to write, uh, you know, for teenagers. I think, oh, I wouldn't know how to, to write No, it's that. kind of fun. I mean, I must say, well, he had to read it, he had to approve it, too. Really? Yeah, because it wouldn't exist if, he had, if it hadn't passed his test. Really? Yeah. So did you let him read it chapter by chapter so that it was... No, I gave him a couple of chapters, I gave him, like, chunks chunks of it at a time yeah right. but but it was uh yeah he's a tough reader too are you very collaborative when you i always imagine you've no. been very no i imagine you'd be very grumpy get away from me i'm writing i'm yeah. salman rushdie <laughs> that's a very good impression no, thanks very much yeah. very good. It's, it's quite like that really yeah so how come well i guess your son is a little bit different yeah yeah he's got it he's got an inside track where are you living now then you're living in london new york new york but i got a place in london what about paris you got a place in paris well, maybe now that I've seen your friend. Yeah, oh, come on, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> to go, Hey, look, there's you so right go, there. Look at that. That's me, yes. Yeah, no, kids are going to go nuts for that. You know? <laughs> that's hot. <laughs> that's hot. It's kind of hot. Yeah, no, hey, hey. It's kind of, that, they're like, so long, Twinkie Twilight vampires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But you see, I think, the, you know, the, the, that, what's his name, the wizard boy with the thing. Harry Potter. You know, he looks like he, yeah, he looks like a cell phone that's charging up, you know. Um, well, the, the <laughs> Harry Potter <laughs> yeah. No, you mustn't see that. Uh, that's what all the well, kids love, Harry Potter. But you see, there's a vacancy there, because he's not doing a lot, that wizard, at the moment. Oh, well, that's he's, true. He's yeah. done. He's, so he's retired now. He's retired. That, that's, she's not writing anymore? No. So I think all those people, all those 20 zillion people. Right. Should and come over re -read and Luca read Luca and the Fire Yeah, yeah because it'll, it'll fill their wizard game. Wait a minute, this is a bit odd. So yeah. the boy wizard and his big giant friend Hagrid went into the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Seems terribly familiar, Salman, if you don't mind me saying so. I thought it was quite, well, wait till you get to the hippogriffs and the... Do you, know, you read? Do you read other authors like that? Do you? Yeah, I had to read the whole. Of, I had to read the whole of J.K. Rowling, every every word, because you have got a thirteen-year-old. He grew up with with all that stuff, so right. I had to read it to know what he was talking about. And he actually, I actually got him to meet J.K. Rowling once, and he started asking her these questions, which were like a Ph.D. thesis. Yeah, the authors you know, like love in that. In volume don't they? Yeah. three, when Snape says this, how do you reconcile that with the fact that in volume six, the father? <laughs> and she's you going. Want to you want to smack that kid? I yeah, tell you, yeah. uh, that's, yeah. that's just cheek. That yeah, is. And she's going. Well, you've really read these books carefully, haven't you? Yeah. And he's going. Yes, I have. <laughs> does he? Does he do that with you? Does he? Follow, yes, he yeah, does. No, right. he does. Yeah, he said. 
you want to be a, an author, do you think? Do you want to be a writer? I don't know. That might be terrifyingly might be true. At the moment, he wants to be an actor, but that'll... Oh, he, they all go through that. Grow up yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be an actor. Did you really? I grew out of that. Did you? I, I don't know. You did a sketch when you were here once. Yeah, you could not get into that dress fast enough, as I remember. Yeah. You don't have to remind me about that sketch. <laughs> <laughs> the sketch that shall always be known as the party at Elton John's house. <laughs> That yeah. was fun, that, yeah. It was fun, Yeah, yes. only for us, no one laughed, but it's still, we had a good time. <laughs> yes. Have you, uh, have you ever been to a party at Elton John's house? I have not, but I have been to the Playboy Mansion. Have you? I have. Now, I've been there, and I kind of, actually, even as I speak about it, I have to get the Purell out. <laughs> yeah, you may want to. Did you go in the grotto with the bikinis and the Australian no, lesbians no, and no, all no, that? No, but I did. No, but I met the Playmate of the Year. You did? I did, and she said to me that she didn't read much, because books made her feel tired and go to sleep. And, and I said... That's adorable! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, I understand completely what you mean. They do the same for me often. And, and she said, but there are some books, like Vogue, that I feel I have to read wow. <laughs> in order to keep up. Gee! So, yeah, so she was literate. Yeah. I'm guessing she had um, other things going attributes. for her. Yeah, yeah. Yes, she had her attributes. Yeah, well, she you, brought you she brought them along. Do you find that it's an aphrodisiac uh, for certain women, though, that they find out you're very clever and uh, you know you write kind of very clever books and? You know, I think I can't tell you that. Yes, you can, Sam. <laughs> you can because I will give you money. Oh, in that case. In All right, case, euros or American dollars. Uh, American dollars. Ah, see, I yeah, knew yeah, I liked yeah. you. All right. <laughs> For one dollar. Yeah. Who have you slept with that slept with you because you're a famous author? All right, two dollars. <laughs> that's that's right. too many to mention. All right, so do you think... How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you five dollars to stop talking. <laughs> It's five, stop talking, we'll take a commercial break, and when we go back, you play your cards right, I'll give you another five dollars. Zalman Rush Day, everybody! Just reading Salman Rushdie's book. I'm on page 94. So uh, it's a good page. It is. It's the page with the flying carpet on it. You know, I've always wanted a flying carpet in a book. Well, you got one right here right, on page exactly. 94. The flying exactly. carpet had grown considerably in size to accommodate all its passengers and cargo, and this exaggerated the waviness of the flight. Yeah, it's useful to have an expanding carpet. <laughs> <laughs> is this code? <laughs> Oh, yeah, what about this? Where did you get the Tin Man? Oh, yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, 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 Jeff. yeah no, that yeah. happened a while ago, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a cowardly lion, Scarecrow? That would be a bit gay, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> hey, um, so what happens in the book? Let me very quickly find oh. out. There's a guy called Luca, and he has a... Yeah, a there's a boy whose father is a storyteller who falls into a deep sleep and is maybe dying, and the boy has to go into the magic world to steal the fire of life to bring it back to save his oh. father's life. So it's not, so it's Using not. a magic carpet? Using, amongst other things, a magic carpet. Anything else? Uh, there's animals. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a lot of animals. Which animals are we talking about? There's a, there's a, there's a dog called Bear. A dog called Bobby? Bear. Oh. And, and a bear. And the bear? Called Dog. A bear called Dog and a dog called Bear? Is this an old Abbott and Costello routine you've turned into a book? <laughs> yeah. Hey. And there's, there's coyotes, there's dragons. Did you? There's you? rats. Yeah, never made that. What? <laughs> What did you call your pee pee when you were a little boy? Because when DJ, you say, I, I used to call my Bobby and he used to call his dog. What you call Yeah, him? no, we didn't have a name for it. We never spoke about it. Really? No, it was, you know, I come from India. We're very. Yeah, well, I conservative. understand. Yeah, conservative. I understand it's conservative, but no, you've got you no. to admit that it exists. Yes, no, no, you don't. <laughs> Actually, you absolutely don't have to admit that it exists. Right, I see. And yeah. so do you admit it exists now? <laughs> I do, Craig, but I do not have a name for it. Well, I don't have a name for mine now. <laughs> no. I mean, we're on nodding terms, but we're not... <laughs> not necessarily... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. 
Uh, all right. Have you ever been to Australia, by the way? I have, yeah. Really? Where have you been to in Australia? I've been to Sydney. Right. I've been to Adelaide. Uh, the, the girls there, they're, they're from Adelaide. Adelaide, yes. The thing I remember about Adelaide is they have a lot of very unpleasant murders there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because most murders are so pleasant exactly. elsewhere, you know. <laughs> exactly. the, the, oh, yeah. yes, he was killed by fragrance and kindness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, long ago, I went to the Adelaide Festival, and while I was there, there was this, somebody broke into the zoo and killed all the animals in the zoo. Is that not from your book? <laughs> well, it's, now it is. Really? They killed <laughs> yeah. all the animals in the zoo? That's yeah. awful. Machine gun them, yeah. Oh, that's awful. Thanks so for thought, bringing us down. I thought people... <laughs> I thought people in Adelaide are strange. No, I, Adelaide, I, they have got a couple of things going there. They've got, they, they have a Grand Prix race there, which oh, yes. is very, very, uh, they have that every year, right? Uh, the, the race in Adelaide. Yes. And they also have a strip club, uh, club called the Crazy Horse. Aha, yes, yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. You've been there? <laughs> you have! You have been to the Crazy Horse in Adelaide! Yes. I you have! Help. I, you know why everybody goes to the Crazy Horse in Adelaide? Because you think, who the hell's going to know? I'm in Adelaide! <laughs> and you go to That's the Crazy true. Horse. That is true. Yeah, I know. Good times. As far as I can remember, I was a little whoop. Yes. Yeah. I was there a long time ago. But yeah, yes, but... I think the horse was there. Crazy. Wait a minute. Are you talking about Secretariat? Oh, my God. <laughs> Simon, you brought it on yourself. Who's headed the door? Secretariat! Let me just say, because you dance with Secretariat, <laughs> I've issued a new regime of giving a free T-shirt to everyone who dances with Secretariat. Look, it says oh, Secretariat. That's very Team Secretariat. Thank you. Take that with your knighthood. Thank you. So Simon Rushdie, everybody. Make reading fun. <laughs> My next guest is a, a literary giant, not literally a giant. <laughs> I mean, he's a fair size. Yeah, I mean, he's not. He's no Tom Cruise, but he's he's a, he's a great author, a truly great author. And the film adaptation of his book *Midnight's Children* opens on April the 26th. My pal, Salman Rushdie, everybody. Salman. I have to tell you, it's great to see you, but something a little bit creepy happened tonight. Like, Is behind right? Michael, the producer, there's a guy that looks really like you. I just noticed. Look, Is he over there? Yeah, look, look at that guy over there. Oh, my God. You know, actually... That is me. That is you? That is me. So you've sent, this yeah. is some kind of decoy? No, no I'm the imposter. <laughs> You're no imposter. You interview him. No. No? Uh, <laughs> hey, this is the first time you've been here for a movie. It's, I know, really, finally, le finally legit, you know, in L.A. with a movie. Yeah, that's it. Now, you know, now you're really getting places with you know, your career. Really, really, I have to tell you. This paper thing. No, so over. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, only sells. Do you read on uh, actual books or do you read on a Kindle or a... I do both. Yeah, I do really? both, yeah. But I wanted to tell you, before we talk about, you know, books... Okay. I wanted to say that I was struck when you were talking to the lovely lady dressed like a tree. Yes. Um, <laughs> how much we had in common, because not only have I been to Graceland and seen Elvis married by the pool... Right. But also, I have succumbed to cupping. Have you? I have. <laughs> like now, uh, uh, on your carpet? Gwyneth and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not exactly on my carpet, no, but you know, like Gwyneth, I too have been cupped. And, <laughs> well, uh, well then, then perhaps you could uh, tell, is, is it yes. beneficial? Did it help you, do you think? It didn't help me. Right, no. right. Uh, 
I had I had this interest this doctor Chinese doctor in New York with the interestingly the unusual Chinese name of Dr. Lee. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> and he he took these he takes these hot glasses and sticks them on your strudel. <laughs> Giant! First Amendment! What's that coming to go? <laughs> I tried, man. I yeah, tried. Thank you. Um, and, you know, afterwards, you look like somebody's tied you down and thrown hot baseballs at you. Really? Yeah, you have these sort of hot baseball marks all over you. It doesn't do a damn bit of good. <laughs> but I think we're going to be hearing from the cupping lobby, though, quite yeah. soon. Well, all I can say is, Dr. Lee, forget about it. All right, okay, well, fair <laughs> enough. Right. Well, what about this then? Are you in the film? I'm not in the film as such. What do you mean as such? My voice is in the film. Oh, you narrate it? Yeah. Oh, nice. So, so the voiceover is me. That's kind of interesting. So I'm like the worst actor in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is really, really good. Now, the story, remind me, it's a while since I've read this. It's, yeah. uh, it's the kids who are born on the, uh, the day of Indian independence. Yeah, they're born they're at, the, at the midnight, you know, India became independent in midnight in August 1947. 47, right. And it's about the kids who are born at that moment and have sort of magical powers as a result. So, I've, you know, we showed the film at some film festivals and people came out and I heard them saying, Oh, it's like the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, you know, they're, they're mutants with magical powers. Right, but... So clearly I need to sue the X-Men. <laughs> I'd be oh. very careful about yeah. that. Yeah, I know, because they have those things that come out of their Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they, they can do that thing with their eyes. They can do the thing, yeah, they yeah. can do terrible damage. What, what, uh, uh, what mutant powers do they have? Well, some of them are telepathic. Mm. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them, Craig, have very powerful knees. <laughs> that was interesting. That was like being cupped. You know? But less painful. Uh, much more enjoyable. More uh, yeah, no, yeah. I haven't been cupped in that way. No. I, um... <laughs> Well, this is lovely. I like that. Are you going to go into movies now? Are you going to, like, action movies, perhaps? I like thought, that? well, now that the whole X-Men thing has started... Right, I, I think it's been going for a while, but you well, can get, you can get in, I'm maybe sure. I could, yeah, maybe they want me With to With the power of... Yes. Literacy. You're right. Mid yes. Midnight's X-Men. Midnight X-Men. I don't think you X-Men's children. Are you going to write a sequel? <laughs> you write a sequel. I bet you if this makes a ton of money, you'll write... I'm never yeah. writing a sequel. Made a lot of money. I'll just I'd do one. No, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I think of it as the beginning of a franchise, really. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like Harry <laughs> Potter, but, you know... Yes. It's like Harry Potter, only different. Right, okay. Yeah. Did you read the Harry Potter books? I did. They're rather good, I thought. They're not bad. Yeah. And a few people liked them, I heard. Yeah, they, yeah. they, did, they did okay. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. Okay. Oh, you would say that, Sam. Well, You're obviously a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Listen, you know, I've, until this moment, I've always liked you. Yo, oh, come now. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a Gryffindor? I, really, you think there's any question? <laughs> no, I'm just messing around with you. Do you have you. a hat? Do you have a hat, by the chance? A sorting hat? Yeah. I wish I had. You know, oh, I, I wish you, I had a sorting I, hat. I think, yeah, I think you need maybe a memo to props department. No? Props department? <laughs> It's a guy called Eddie that does his best with ten bucks a show. It's not, it's not a props department. Well, Eddie then. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll mention it. Eddie, Eddie get a short and high. <laughs> Have you got one? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> it probably won't be here for tonight. But, He's uh, quick, though. Oh, Eddie's the best. Uh, he, uh, what he can do with ten dollars and a bit of sticky tape is amazing. <laughs> So, uh, what are you working on now, then? You writing another book? I'm trying to. What about a graphic novel? I'd like to, you know. Yeah, you should yeah, do that. Yeah, I'd like to. You enjoy that. Everybody else I know does it, so why not me? Yeah, you do it. Yeah. And, and I'll do the drawings. <laughs> you just rejected me! I just tried to find a way of saying that that's a really good idea. <laughs> Without actually saying it. <laughs> Which I don't actually think. <laughs> but, yes. No, let's, no, let's no. Do, no. Let's, let's I've been that. following you on, you've been very quiet on Twitter recently. Yes, I've got bored. You got bored with Twitter? Yeah. I've, I have a little bit. You know, I just suddenly thought, no. 
It's not so much. It's not so much the tweeting out. It's the tweeting back that yes. kind of gets me know, sometimes. Uh, and also, I thought 140 characters is not much. Not for a guy who writes these. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're normal, the breath you take comes out at 600 pages. Yeah. 140 characters is a little limiting. Yeah, well, for great, great books, it would never have been written if, you know, great authors like, it was the best of times. Happy face. <laughs> That's it. But you can have, you know, truthfully. <laughs> I like that idea. If you're, yes. <laughs> if you're Dickens, of course, I mean, you can't do a sequence, you know, you can do it as best of times. Well, he did, he did do and that, right? I it mean, was the way he published his books in serial form, so maybe if you just squash the serial a bit down from 30 pages at a time to 140 characters, Dickens could have done it. When you're having breakfast, do you squash your cereal? <laughs> I have 140 characters to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so 140 characters come into your house and press, and press your Cheerios. 140 characters rush into the room and squash my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is sex code. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that. No, they think I'm kidding. They're not supposed to know no, that. No, no. <laughs> hey, listen, we're out of time, uh, which seems uh, a great shame. Shame. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, ask me more often. Well, you can come here anytime you like. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on tomorrow? <laughs> no, I fire him. Harrison Ford's on tomorrow. You'll have to go second guest. Yes, Harrison Ford and I got an award together at a film festival in, in San Francisco, the Bay Area, San Jose. Really? And I thought, well, yeah, we were co co-recipients of this thing called the Maverick Spirit Award. And I thought, well, if that's, if he's Han Solo, that makes me Chewbacca. <laughs> so, there you go. Let me ask you a little bit about, uh, about awards, though. See, there's, uh, like, do you, these awards, like these, uh, the Maverick Spirit Awards. Yes. Do you some, because this happens to me sometimes. They yeah. say, we'd like to offer you this award. Will you come to our festival? And I say, no, I can't make it. But I'll take the award. They're like, no, no, no you no, can't no, have no, the no, award no, no. unless you come you to the festival. You have to show up. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's not an award, no. then. That's No, it's a bribe. Yeah, it's a bribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's all right. that happens to you, we, then. We need those. I'll take bribes. I'll take bribes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're out of time. Do you fancy a quick awkward pause now you're an actor? All right. All right, then. <laughs> wow, that's very good, actually. Uh, you've, got that, you've got that glare. No, that, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon Rice, the everybody. My next guest is uh, an award-winning author. He writes things like this. <laughs> Books, like a really long, papery tweet. <laughs> He's very, very clever, so if there's a gap, just go. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome my good friend, Salmon Rushley, everybody. Salmon Rushley. Too. I haven't seen you in a long time. You look great. I know. I came here and there was an earthquake. What's that about? Yes, that's right. Uh, were you here just for the, to, the yeah, shake? Just to prove, because it was today when we're doing the show. Oh, which is thank you. Tonight, you know, because there's some weird time stuff going on. Like, you could almost believe that it was Wednesday and, like, Uma Thurman. <laughs> but that's impossible. Why, that's it sounds like the plot of some strange book. It's impossible, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you, talking about strange books, I wrote a novel that began with an earthquake called The Ground Beneath Her Feet, huge earthquake in Mexico. Right. Following the principle of Cecil B. DeMille, who said the way to make a movie is you start with an earthquake and you build it up from there. Right. You know? <laughs> so anyway, so I do this book. I go to Mexico after the book comes out, and the journalists there are really upset. They say, why did you destroy Mexico in your book? And I said, you know, it's still there. You, you, <laughs> you want to be careful yeah. about writing things down and pissing people off. <laughs> and I, 
Never done that. No, hey, 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 hey. No, no, he mustn't, actually. No, I, I was saying the opposite of what's true for comic effect. Do you understand irony. what I'm irony. saying? I, irony. Write what you damn well please. Isn't it America? Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, we're all right. Yeah. Um, well, you never... You suffer from censorship. You've got a censor yeah. sitting over there. Yeah, well, the, uh, yeah. Well, telling you what you can't say with words that where you can only use the first letter. What? You can't use that hand gesture, either. <laughs> <laughs> He's Salmon Rice Day, man! Uh, no, this I, gesture? Yeah, yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> so, no, well, do you ever... <laughs> That's so, three times. I, I have to say, whatever you're doing is very half-hearted. <laughs> I'm like that. You really, that. Want, you really like want to that. throw yourself into it a little more. Really? No! Really? Well, that's, that's us spend all the profits uh, on pixelation. <laughs> right, I'm going to read you uh, the first line of your book, right? Yes. If you get this correct, you can go to a restaurant. All right. <laughs> there was once, in the city of Kahani? Yes. In the land of Aleph Bay? Yes. A boy named Luca who had two pets, a bear named Dog and a dog named Bear which meant whenever he called out dog, the bear waddled up, amiably on his hind legs, and when he shouted bear, the dog bounded towards him, wagging his tail. Mm. Now what... Cracking, Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm glad you asked that question. And it's because, actually, my son, for whom I wrote the book, ah. has a dog, which he called bear. Does he have a bear? No, but I said your next pet has to be a bear, bear that you called, called dog. dog. You know, so then he wouldn't do that, so I had to put it in the book. Right, okay, because you've got <laughs> <coughs> you to be careful with bears. You can't let your kids play with bears. No, no. Uh, small bears, perhaps. Well, teddy bears? Yeah, teddy bears. Did no, you I, I, I think I must have had a teddy bear at some point. I'm sure you must it's have. a little while ago. Childhood. <laughs> I was thinking more, didn't you go to Oxford or Cambridge? Where did you go to? I went to Cambridge. Didn't you, as a Cambridge undergraduate, walk around with a teddy bear named Aloysius oh. and drink? No, you know, that's people in Oxford do that. Oh, really? That's <laughs> it. It was at Oxford, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Oxford. Oxford, that was Sebastian Flight. Yes, Oxford. In uh, Brighthead Revisited. Brighthead Revisited. Revisit. Ter right. Terrible place, Oxford. Oh, sorry. Oh, something uh, happened to my tie? Your tie is over your microphone. My tie is over my yeah. microphone. I did that on purpose. Don't you ever talk to me again when I'm talking to Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> I'm talking to Salmon Rushdie, man. So, but he couldn't hear because my he tie... Could, he couldn't hear because your tie. <laughs> Do you find that uh, your tie often goes places you'd rather it wouldn't? I think it's for that reason that I very because rarely... Because your tie is right, right? Look where right, it is. Look where it is. Right it is. I mean, oh. you, you could be stark... No! <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's why I so rarely wear a tie, Craig. Do you really? I Very mean, you wear a tie a lot, don't you? You're no, a man not, of sartorial no, no, elegance. Only, only when I come and see no, you. No, come on, man. I have to, I have to live up to, you know, that. Well, this is uh, some old Bob Barker stuff. Yeah, no, but, um, it's, it's not, I, didn't, I didn't say it was hard to live up to it. Do you, are you a, a, something of a fashion plate? You live in New York, don't you? I am well known as the most fashion platey novelist in New York. <laughs> I think that, People I mean, you do look very this. elegant. You do look uh, like you, you care. That's a very well cut, nice suit. You've got nice you. shoes and thank you. elegant well, socks yeah, and nice well, tie. Thank you. Do I you write wear, books too. Do you wear fancy underwear? <laughs> do you have anything that you write in? Is there anything like you're writing cardigan or something like that? Or No, I, I actually get out of bed and put on a robe and go to my computer. You shuffle right? over to a robe? I shuffle over in a kind of slobby well, that, I find that very satisfying, actually. That's the well, way a writer should I work. One of the great things about working at home is you don't have to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> How would that be for me here? Could I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. You know, bedroom, desk, you go from one to the other. Yeah, and your tie's going over your microphone. And I, I hardly heard what you were saying there. <laughs> Are you on the book tour now? No, I'm doing. I'm just actually doing the boring business of actually writing. A another book. another writing book? a book. Yeah, oh. which Isn't takes that, you know for very it's takes a, a long time. It's a you slow, I see you've stopped on the Tweety. I hardly. I, I you know I, I had to come off it because I have to do the day job. Right. Did you find you were writing and rewriting and rewriting <laughs> tweets? <laughs> were you like oh. it's there? 
it's almost right, but I just need another few days. Yeah. 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 I thought, you know, if only there were 150 characters. Yeah. <laughs> 140, you know, how many, that's too many characters for a novel anyway. I, you uh, could always tell, though, there's some authors that I follow on Twitter, and you could always tell when they write, like uh, Neil Gaiman. He's yes, like, he does he's there, 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 and then boom, disappears. And you yes. go, oh, book coming. Book. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, you have to, you know, it's, it's, it can get addictive. It does, it yeah. I was on it a lot for a while, yeah, yeah. and then I but stopped. But I'm cured. I'm cured. I'm cured. I've tweeted <laughs> once in five months. You'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> they always come back for one more. <laughs> Yeah, but I've got to finish this damn thing first. Right. Do you get book, frustrated? Book, yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah. Do you get angry? Do you get angry when you can't finish the book? No, I'm very calm, Craig. I think you have, I think you probably have a bit of a temper. I'm preternaturally calm. Oh, that's, that's, see, that's scary. See? Yeah. That's a, that's a $2 word there. Preternaturally. You can't use that in a tweet. There's no room for anything no, else. No, exactly. <laughs> no I'm, I'm calm. I sit there quietly. I swear inwardly. Well, See, you swear it. outwardly, you get bleeped. I swear inwardly. And you don't get bleeped? Don't get bleeped. There's no internal bleeping device. <laughs> so what you're saying is I should pack this in and write novels? Yeah. Well, you've written books. You're an author. And I, think you're an, I think you're an author. I think I'm a guy that's written a couple of books. I think there's a difference. Uh, all right. So I'll yeah. accept that. Yeah, yes, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're out of time, actually. As like, you know, we're, 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 we're. Mouth organ, awkward pause. Uh, or do you want a, a sore throat a pastille? I can take a sore throat. Do you have a sore throat, too? Always. <laughs> really? Yeah. Were we making out and I forgot? I didn't want to remind you. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have forgotten, Salmon. <laughs> Salmon Rushley, everybody. <laughs> Craig, my son wants to know if your magic phone can call Santa. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Santa could call me. Oh, hello. Hold on. Hello. <laughs> it's Santa Claus, Craig. How are you? <laughs> Wait a minute. Isn't this evil Santa Claus? Oh. Yes, it is, Craig. I hear your little show's going bye-bye. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. Evil Santa Claus, you've got your own music. Oh, yes, I do. Santa has everything, unlike you. <laughs> Someone's tickling Santa's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> You're not really that evil, evil Santa, are you? You're just kind of sarcastic and oh. nasty. Oh, is that right? Yeah! You know, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> because you're a foreigner. <laughs> Wait a minute, Evil Santa, you're a racist? Oh, oh yes I am, Craig. I go to dinner with, with Michael on occasion. <laughs> <laughs>